Hey, good morning guys. Yesterday was election day in America and this has been a very emotional election. A lot of stress, a lot of anxiety. I know from talking to you guys yesterday you had you had worries about it and no matter what you wanted out of this election, I know a lot of those worries continue. This has been one of those years where you feel that everything is in jeopardy and a lot hinges on this election, but 2020 in general has had your life in jeopardy. It's been very stressful in a lot of ways. I'm telling you this because I want you to take care of your emotions. It's very important to you and your well-being. It's very easy to get wrapped up in what's going on and let yourself get out of control where you feel like you don't have any grip on what's happening and that's not good for you. So one example I want to talk about is this summer. There was the death of George Floyd while he was being arrested and there were protests. There were people that argued about what happened and why it happened and some people argued one thing, some people argued another thing, some people protested one way, some people protested another way, and I was watching this on the news, and I'm watching it on social media, and every moment I saw more and more things that I cared about, and unfortunately, I saw that it was escalating. It was getting more and more wrapped up into my emotions, and it was not doing well for my mental health. So what did I do? I unplugged. I unplugged. I unplugged. I took time off from watching the news, from watching social media. I took time off so that I was able to handle emotions and things that I needed to handle in my own life a lot better. That's something that I need you to be able to do throughout your life when you get wrapped up in something. Know how to step back. Know how to let your emotions and your brain relax and take a break. Right now your anxiety may be about the election. Maybe your anxiety is going to be about school or family or friends. Any one of these things are stuff that will affect you and knowing how to step back is going to be better for your mental health. This is my tip for you. Watch what's going on with your brain. Watch what's going on with your emotions. Notice when you're getting overloaded and know how to step back to give yourself a break. The school website has a whole page devoted to resources for this, things like mindfulness and meditation and yoga and uh, just some relaxing games that you can play. Take advantage of those, those are good. Meditation is one tool, it's a good tool, and there's lots of different ways to meditate, but one basic principle is being aware of what you're paying attention to, knowing how to take control of what you're paying attention to, and knowing how to take control of what you're letting go. For example, when I meditate in the morning, I close my eyes, I slow things down for a moment. I stop noticing what I am thinking about and I notice my breathing. I notice my jaw is tight. I notice the ticking of the clock. I notice the hum of the cars on the freeway far beyond the walls of my house. I'm giving a little bit of attention to all of these small things. I give my brain a chance to relax. If one of those things is non-threatening, then maybe I spend some time listening to it or watching it. The goal is not to control what is happening or control what is thinking. It's deciding what to do with your brain. It's deciding what to hold on to and what to let go. If you find a situation you can trust, you trust the situation and you let your brain relax. Listening to the ticking of the clock, that could be something that you trust and you just pay attention to the sound and your brain can relax and stop worrying about the other things for just a moment. There's an experiment I tried a few days ago with melting ice cubes. It didn't turn out exactly like I had hoped um, or how I envisioned, but that's okay. I found the process of watching the ice cubes melt incredibly relaxing. I was able to keep, I was able to step away from the world for a moment and just watch the change. Knowing when and how to give your brain a break is a skill that you'll benefit from for the rest of your life. I wish you well guys. Have a great rest of your day. I'm going to try a little something where I will cook an ice cube and I'm going to try and use a lens. So this is a lens I have from an old slide projector. I'll put an ice cube here. We're not being exact right now. They're close. That's good. We're going to do one ice cube that I'm going to use the lens on and the other ice cube I'm going to just let it sit in the sun to see what effect my lens is actually having on the ice cube. Focus a little bit of the sunlight on here. You really see that one ice cube light up because it's getting so much focused light from the sun. And if we wanted to measure this at a rate of how much is melting, one simple test could be a matter of how many drips per minute. 
doing. Guys, count the drips for a minute. Which ice cube is having more drips per minute? Another thing you might notice is if you look at where the ice cube is touching the metal, I'm actually noticing the metal is digging into the ice cube. The metal is conducting heat, and that heat is transferring into the ice cube. It's adding heat in the outside environment. Metal is a conductor, which means it will transfer heat. Starting to drip on the table here and get my arm wet. Should have arranged a different way to hold the lens. I don't have to hold the lens up for 25 minutes. 